Connect from Tennessee, Braden Smith from Purdue, and Zach Eady from Purdue. The most outstanding player of the Midwest region is Zach Eady. You need me to repeat that? Okay. Baylor Shireman Creighton, Zakai Ziegler, Tennessee, Dalton Connect, Tennessee, Braden Smith, Purdue, Zach Eady, Purdue, and the most outstanding player is Zach Eady. Okay, good evening. Welcome back to the, to the interview room here at Little Caesars Arena. We're joined now by the Tennessee Volunteers. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Please remember to, to silence your cell phones. Please raise your hand for a microphone to be brought to you. And when you do ask a question, please introduce yourself and your media affiliation. Please note that the recording of press conferences on cameras or on cell phones is prohibited. From your left to your right, we are joined by head coach Rick Barnes, Dalton Connect, Zakai Ziegler, and Josiah Jordan-Jones. I'm sorry, Josiah Jordan-James. Coach, if you wouldn't mind starting us out with an opening statement, we'd appreciate it. Congratulations to Purdue. Um, both teams fought hard. Uh, and um, I thought our guys really put up a battle. We were playing against a, a guy that has a unique game, certainly. But uh, I think Matt Painter has done a great job with uh, continuing to build this team and grow them in areas to give them a chance now to be part of a Final Four and play for a national championship. And, uh, not just what he does uh, when he posts up, the way he really gets your defense distorted and everything, but the way their team knows how to get it to them, different angles, different times. And uh, But uh, again, just congratulations to them. Uh, uh, I, I can't tell you how much and how special this team was uh, for us as a coaching staff to coach. And the tough part is when you know where we started five years ago with Josiah James and Santiago Vestavi and then with the class coming in behind and where we are today to where I think when people think of college basketball, they know that Tennessee is going to be in the fight. And uh, the hardest thing is when it ends. And then we have a special year with a special guy like Dalton coming into the program. Uh, certainly, I've said no one's changed our program more than uh, Zakai Ziegler. His DNA's 
changed everything. But uh, that's a tough part of where we are right now. Uh, uh, just a blessing of having a chance to be with a group of guys that they set out with. Um, they wanted to do uh, obviously win a national championship, play on Monday. And uh, I can tell you this, when they look back on it right now, it's very difficult. But they'll look back and know that uh, they went after it and should have no regrets. And uh, again, I wish I could make it the outcome different for them. But uh, the fact that God's blessed me with the time I've had with these guys is something that I wish every coach could enjoy. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate that. Let's go to questions for the student athletes first, please. And we'll start in the second row here on the right. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Josiah, can you just, and I know it's probably too quick, but emotionally, can you just kind of sum up where, where you are after everything you guys have been through this year? Um, it's hard to put into words, like, the pain that I feel right now, but it's even harder to put into words, like, the, the joy and the happiness I've gotten from being around this team, this university for the, fa for the past five years. Like, these guys mean so much to me, and I can't really describe it, but I love them. I love them so much. We'll go to the third row here on the right. Garrett Pog, FS Sports. Dalton, you had a, you know, back-to-back -back threes to make them take a timeout, and then after then they started guarding you a little tighter off the screen. What adjustments do you have to make to your game in order to get yourself open when that happens? Um, just watch the film with uh, Coach and see where I could improve my game for the future and stuff like that. They made their adjustments, and um, I got to make my adjustments and just learn off of it. Any other questions for the student athletes? We'll go to the back right here. Hey, Denny Cop, Associated Press Broadcast. Uh, the question for Dalton, um, when you look back at this, and I know it's, it's tough to do in the moment after, but can you feel good knowing that you went down swinging and you gave it your all and, and put your team on your back and got you as close as you did to get into where you got? Um, I don't think I put the team on my back. I think all of us carried each other. I think every single one of us did what we needed to do. And at the end of the day, uh, they were just um, the better team. And we didn't, uh, you know, we always were coming out swinging. And um, yeah, I just love these guys. and. I wish we could have one more game, and I'm thankful for all these guys for accepting me for my one year here, as well as the coaching staff. We'll stay here on the right side in the first row. Uh, Larry Lage from Associated Press. Question for Zakai. Can you uh, share your thoughts on the game Dalton had and maybe on uh, the surrounding cast not playing as well as it has in many games this season? You know, uh, DK, he's a fighter. Uh, every night, he's going to do what he did tonight. Uh, you know, we think he's the best player in the country. I don't, I, that's, that will always be how I see him in my eyes. The best player in the country. Uh, you know, Purdue they they did their thing. They they won the game, and hopefully they go out and win the next game also. But you know, we just didn't we didn't execute some some stuff. And coach always told us it comes down to little things. And you know, we we fought every guy in that locker room. We we wanted to win, and I don't I don't feel like anybody in there had any doubt in their mind that we could still win the game, or or had any doubt in their mind that we going into the game that we wouldn't win. But I know everybody in there fought and did whatever they had to do and left it out there all out there on the floor. Uh, but just got to give it to Purdue. They they did what they had to do and they won the game. We're gonna move it over to the left side in the fourth row here near the back. Akeem Gillespie, Indy Star. Uh, Dalton, I mean, obviously not the result you would want, but the, the game that yourself and, and Zach Eady had, just the back and forth battle, it seemed like every time Zach hit a basket, you kind of answered just, what's it like to be in a game with featuring two great players such as yourself and Zach? Yeah, we, uh, we were going back and forth, but I think it's, uh, for me, it's my teammates for, you know, having the belief in me to go out there and keep shooting it and keep running plays for me and stuff like that and just having the trust to have my uh, the ball in my hands. So uh, I think it's just credit to my teammates for making it super easy for me just to go out there and be myself. We'll go with the second row here on the left. Yeah, Josiah, it's always difficult, you know, when you get to this point in the season 
but has this season felt different to you and does this feel different now as, as coach said you know it's been all out there no regrets yeah I'm obviously proud of you know everything that we were able to accomplish this group and my five years of being here was the most fun to be around we we genuinely loved each other so much and and that's the hardest part sitting here right now just not being able to to go to practice tomorrow and you know knowing that the the season is really over but you know the relationships that we have are, are lifelong relationships i just hated that you know our season had to end so early we'll go to the second row i'm sorry the third row on the right side Ryan Sylvia, Rivals.com. Dalton, just what's your relationship been like with Coach Barnes this year and how beneficial has that been for you? Um, I would say it's by far the closest I've ever had to be with a coach. He's coached me super hard uh, ever since I told him on my visit that I want to be coached super hard and he's held up to his end. And he's been beyond just that. He's been um, helping me like, off the court, on the court. He cracks jokes and stuff like that. Coach Barnes, I love him to death. and. Um, I can't thank him enough for uh, bringing me in uh, for my one year here. Any other questions for the players? All right, thanks, guys. You can go back to the locker room. Congrats on a great season. We'll continue here for a few minutes with Coach Barnes. And we'll have two questions on the right coach in the second row. We'll start here on the end. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Uh, coach, just what about the way the game was officiated? How difficult, you know, was it to, I guess, to, to coach your guys on how to de try to defend Edie with the way the game was called? Well, one, you, you've got a very unique player, Zach Edie, very unique, and uh, it's a hard game to officiate. Um, the space on the court is so important, and. Uh, depending on how a guy gets there and how you try to keep him from getting there and the effort that goes into that uh, oftentimes can get the one guy in particular there out of position where he can maybe help on some other different things. But uh, he, he's an extremely uh, physical player, uh, does a great job uh, wedging with his body, uh, I, I thought, all along. Uh, his misses are the hardest thing to defend because uh, – you know, he does lead strong when he, he'll, he'll bounce you off and try to create a crack and step through it. That's where he's improved so much with his footwork. But uh, I think it's hard for officials because there's not many guys like that. And uh, it's, the game has changed so much through the years. And whether you stay in the lane three seconds or you don't, uh, if you don't ever get out, it really distorts everything. And I'm not saying he did or he didn't, but watching tape, it's a, it, it, he's a difficult guy to officiate, I can tell you that. And he's a, an extremely difficult guy to guard. Uh, and uh, because of, again, knowing where he wants the ball. And he's got a group of guys around it that know how to get it to him at the right time. And as much as you try to scheme to get guys down there, to try to take some space away, and all you can do is go down and dig at it and try to help before, I uh, hope you can come up with some deflections. and. We fouled him and really looked at the stats. But uh, it's hard. again, I can just tell you he's a, he's a difficult guy to guard against, but he's a difficult guy for referees to officiate to. And I don't care what any of them says. It's, he's a hard guy to do that with because he's a unique guy in terms of how he, how he plays. We'll stay on the right side here in the second row. Uh, Terry Davis, Tri State Defender. Hey, Coach, I know it's not the way you want the season to end, but how proud are you of the guys the way they could have, they fought all game, they coming back and forth, they could they had multiple chances to turn the outcome out and how they fought all year? Well, we've had a group of guys that, that have done that, and it goes back, if, again, I said I'm just thankful that God brought these guys into my life because I, I truly have enjoyed going to practice with them every day and even days when they maybe weren't at their best and I'd get after them a little bit, they, they responded and – and I, I go back to where we were five years ago and uh, what Josiah and Santi uh, did to, uh, and where they started, where we are today. They left it so much better than they found it. And Zakai certainly has made an unbelievable impact. But Dalton coming in and uh, having a, just a year that will be hard. To, uh, I mean, think about it, just out of nowhere. I mean, nobody expected it. But... This group of guys, if you if you knew their families, if you knew their backgrounds, I think that and, and Jemai Meshack, I mean, he's he's been a big part of it, and 
Jonas had a tough day today, and, and no one, nobody hurts more than he does. And uh, But uh, we got a special group of guys. And uh, I just, again, uh, when you have a special team, that's what makes it so hard when it ends because uh, you just wanted so much more for them. Third row here on the right, please. Garrett Pog, FS Sports. Uh, there's some buzz on Twitter with how Dalton Connect has, has raised his draft stock pretty dramatically over the past month or so. If there was an NBA team interested in taking him, what would you say to them? Well, he's only getting started. He's just getting started. I mean, he, he came to – I mean, offensively, he's – I mean, he's going to continue to get better there. And, he's, and you know, he's a, what I would call a flamethrower. You know, he, he gets going he, – he gets his shot off. You're not going to affect him with it. Defensively, he's, he's, he's got a, he knows he's got to get better there, but um, I think he would tell you that no one's asked him to maybe do it as hard as we did this year, and he responded well. And, and when we have some guys that maybe aren't having the, the days that you want them to have and more falls on him offensively, uh, I'm really impressed with his cardio toughness and the way that he tries to fight through and people trying to make him guard, which you know, people are going to do that too, screening him, doing all kind of things. But... He's, he's, he's a young 22-year-old kid that really is just getting started. and uh, But he loves the game. He works at it. And uh, it's going to be fun going forward to watch how much he improves. Move it over to the left side here in the second row in the middle. Josh Orsch, fan-sided. Coach, 31 shots for Dalton tonight. How would you assess the, the balance for your team offensively and, and the game kind of turning into a mono e mono at times between Dalton and Zach? Well, again, I go back. We know our players, and, you know, we read them. I think we know how to read them. And uh, when he gets it going, and like Zakai said, we've seen him do that. Um, uh, would I like to have more at the rim at times to try to put more pressure? Absolutely. But uh, we weren't getting that early. And when we struggle like that, we're fortunate that we have a guy that can go do what he can do. And we are trying to move him around, do some different things with him. And they were obviously working hard. and trying to keep him from getting it. and uh, But, uh, I mean, we go in the game looking for balance. But if guys aren't getting it done, we, we had a guy that we could re rely on. And do you want to do that? You really don't. But when he gets it going, we want it, we want him to do what he does. And our players understand that. But uh, uh, And they, they worked hard at that. But again, would you like to have more balance, some inside, more from those guys? Absolutely. Move the front row here on the right side. Larry Leach from AP. Dalton had a couple threes late in the game, three minutes left, two minutes left. Uh, was it something Purdue did, or did they just not fall? You saw the ones he missed? Yes. Yeah, I think he, he just – no, no, I, I, I can assure you that they're not going to affect him on his threes. I mean, I haven't seen anybody all year really affect him too much when he's out there. Uh, if anything, it was the fact that a lot had seemed to be put on him because, uh, again, we weren't getting the balance that, that, we, that we'd like to have. But uh, – uh, he he had some looks at it and uh, and uh, just didn't go down for him and and they're a good they're a really good defensive rebounding team and uh, a good offense where they know when Edie's going to shoot it and they start wedging in there and uh, but uh, Dalton offensively can do a lot of different things and uh, especially with so much attention put on him and he's not afraid of the moment and that's the one thing that I think I probably learned after the our very first game against Michigan State uh, ex exhibition that because he surprised us all and what we did realize then is that he wasn't afraid of the moment. Left side coach in the second row. Wes Rucker, 24-7 sports. Rick, I think you all have lost to Purdue twice this season by a total of 10 points and they've shot 81 free throws and you all have shot 41 in those games. How difficult is it to beat a team when those numbers are where they are, however they get there? Well, it's, it's hard and uh, I mean, I can go back and uh, we can all have what we feel about. I've been doing this a long time, and I was talking earlier about it. I mean, there's different ways you can foul in this game. There's different ways you can get fouled. And uh, I've always felt that through the years, uh, we lost an NCAA game years ago where we were playing against a team that was every touch foul on the perimeter was being called, but the physicality inside wasn't. And my comment during that game years ago was, are we going to call it different inside-outside? And it's kind of changed a little bit. It's kind of gone the other way, where uh, some of the contact that's allowed on the perimeter is more so than it used to be. And inside, it's pretty much, uh, you know, it's, it's physical. 
It is. Somebody said it the other day, and it's true. Our, our game is more physical than the NBA. I mean, it's not even close. It's not even close with the physicality that's in our game today. And, uh, uh, and I don't have a problem with it. I mean, people would always say that, you know, we're real physical, but there's a fine line there uh, that, that goes with it. And, and, uh, but uh, that, that's when you look at it and see, and, and, and I said it before coming in that I thought that the game there was officiated different, and it was there. I mean, some of the perimeter touch fouls in Maui weren't called today, and, and I don't think they should have been. But I don't think, I don't think they should have been called in Maui. But there's a difference in officiating at the start of the year to the end of the year. And we all know it. Everybody knows. I mean, I was on the rules committee for five years. We talked about it. And, uh, but, again, both teams played their hearts out. And, again, I'm not complaining about the officials because ju you just asked me a question. I think it's a very hard game to officiate. And uh, sometimes it's hard for players to adjust to exactly how it's going on because it, it, it's a tough game to officiate, especially when you have a unique player like Zach, a guy like Dalton. I mean, on the perimeter, uh, you know, he was getting pushed around a little bit too. But uh, that's where, again, I think it's uh, – and, and, and officials, believe me, it's a hard game to officiate. As much time as I spent on the rules committee and know how hard they work at wanting to get the game right. And, they, and again, they would all say this time of year they want players to decide the game, which they should. But still, there's certain rules of the game that always have to be administered, whether – whether or not we like it or not. I'll stay on the left side. Joe, fourth row. Joe Reichshorn from The Athletic. Rick, you mentioned uh, Jonas. And what did you get from JP during that stretch? And was that, did that come down to just a little bit more physicality and ability to try to fight him for position, fight Zach for position? I think, I think it's a, just a, that's the one great takeaway from the day for him is, I mean, he got a chance to play more than he's played. And uh, I'm sitting here, sitting here thinking now, maybe we ought to try to use him like Zach Eady because he, he showed his physicality. And we've thought that about him. I don't think he's ever seen himself that, as that kind of player because you watch him warm up, he wants to stand out and shoot threes. But the fact is he went in and, and battled against, you know, the player of the year in college basketball. I thought he, it was a great experience for him going forward. It, it's definitely he understands what it's about. And uh, But, again, Jonas was just having a really hard time letting Zach set up right in front of the rim. And we we couldn't get there to help any, any way about any any – just couldn't get there when it's that deep. The whole thing was trying to get him to start out further, try to keep him there so we could get those digs where we didn't have to come so far. And Jonas was just having a hard time keeping him out of the middle of the lane. Jump ahead to the first row here. Ryan Schumbert, Rocky Top Insider. Just what went wrong in those final five minutes of the first half? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure anything went wrong. I mean, it, you know, you're playing two teams. It's got a game of runs. We had one. They made one. And... Uh, again, there, uh, I thought we had a couple shots that weren't good, uh, but uh, it wasn't because of lack of effort. And uh, but uh, they're, they're, I mean, they're a terrific basketball team. I'm, I'm, when you lose to uh, Purdue or Tennessee, I'm not sure you can say anything particularly went wrong. And I mean, I know every guy out there wanted to to win. I mean, there's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser. We'll look back and and we'll say we could have done this, we could have done that, but we didn't. And and uh, we, we fought. I, I can tell you, we, uh, I told the team at halftime I didn't think we had played our best basketball yet. And uh, we, uh, but there we gave them those uh, downhill drives where they had a couple, I think they had six, eight points where they pretty much came in untouched from uh, the perimeter. And, and uh, that's not what we normally do. And, uh, but give them credit, they read it and finished it. Second row on the left. Yeah, Rick, Gentry asked this Tennessee, and what you've obviously had some good teams, but what's made this group different, you think? And, and, and for you, does this moment feel different, you know, having gotten what you got out of these guys to get to this point before it ended? I think what made this group special is character. If you knew their families, if you uh, knew who they were, and, and I think the, who they are, and if you think about, and I give, I give my staff great credit in terms of the intel that they do when they bring people into our program. They would, I've often walked into a gym and sit down with a guy and watching a person they want me to watch and I'll see somebody else play and the coach will say, coach, he, he, he wouldn't be a good fit for us. Our, our coaches know what we're looking for, the fit we want. And uh, these guys have represented that to the, to the highest degree. And um, 
as a coach, you know, you look forward to practice and, and uh, you want guys, Dalton talked about being coached, that want to be coached. And when you have something that you know is special and when it comes to an end like that, really, you, it's, as tough as it is, you, in a, we'll sit back, or I certainly have all year realized how blessed I've been to have this group of guys. And it started with, as I mentioned earlier, with Josiah and Santi. And, and it's just uh, Jemiah Meshach and Z. I mean, if you just – if you all knew these guys the way we 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 do and how much they care, it's uh, uh, I've been able to do it for a long time, and like next year maybe you have another team that can do it. Those seniors don't get another crack at it. That's why I'm glad that we accomplished. What, and, and there's no doubt, in, and I'll, I'll tell you, there's no doubt in my mind that we thought we had a team that could win the national championship, and uh, and I and I still believe that. But we. Ran up against a team uh, that's going to get ready to have a chance to play on Monday. They'll have to win another one to get there, but they're certainly – and you have to admire the fact that they lost to, a, what, a 16 seed and turned right back around. That's what that's what college sports is about, is the character of these kids that – and make no bones about it, they're kids. And uh, our job is to teach them. And, uh, and like I said, I just wish more people, more coaches – and, and every coach talks about their team. I know what a special group we had, and I wish more coaches had a chance to have guys like this. And some of them do, not, not that I'm not saying anybody else does. It's just that we've got a special group of guys, and, and uh, I hate it for them today that we maybe weren't at our very best, but I do know that we fought the entire time. Thanks, Coach. We'll take one last question on the right side here. Coach, just the uh, uh, Denny Cap AP broadcast, just taking the officiating whistles completely out of the equation, how proud of your – guys on the interior were you the way they battled with Zach and, and battled for the glass I know you came up short on the glass but um, obviously it was a, a tough matchup all around yeah I, I really am proud of it and again I, again I want to be I, I'm not blaming anything on the officials I'm not I just I mean he I, I don't want you to think or anybody to think that it's it's because uh, I wouldn't ever do that until I watched the tape myself and saw what I wanted to see and but uh I'm, I'm proud because we knew we'd already played them and uh, we knew what to expect. I was I was a little surprised at the start of the game that they didn't run. I mean, down in out in Hawaii, you know, it was an up and down game, and I think they felt like that uh, Matt wanted to go through him all day. I mean, you look at the uh, three point shots. You know, we were obviously aware of his supporting cast because we knew, and they made a big one when they needed to. There's a big three that they made there in, in the last couple minutes. But we knew they were going to – once the game settled in, we knew. I mean, it was very simple. They were going to come down and pound it in there. And I knew that our guys would fight. Uh, I, I think Jonas fought as hard as he could. I really do. And I think that Tobey fought his heart out, JP. Even Jemai Meshack when he was down there that one time. Uh, he, like I said, he's a unique guy. But uh, I'm, I'm, I really am proud of the effort. And, uh, uh, I mean, we still had a chance uh, – all throughout and uh but uh a big play really was the block too i mean Edie made a great block that was i mean if we'd have gotten two right there that i think it'd have been a one possession game that was a big play and you got to give him credit for that i mean he he stayed with it but uh, again i wouldn't trade our guys for anybody thanks coach we right, thank appreciate you all your time
Gracias. All right, good evening. Welcome back to the interview room here at, Little, here at Little Caesars Arena. We are now joined by the Midwest Regional Champion Purdue Boilermakers. Gentlemen, thanks for coming, congratulations. Please remember to silence your cell phone as a courtesy to the team members and also the media in the room. Please raise your hand for, to have a microphone brought your way to ask a question, and when you do, please introduce yourself and your media affiliation. And then finally, please note that the recording of press conferences on cameras or on cell phones is prohibited during this press conference. From your left to your right, we are joined by head coach Matt Painter, Zach Eady, Lance Jones, Fletcher Lawyer, and Braden Smith. Coach, if you wouldn't mind starting us out with an opening statement, we will then take questions for the student athletes. Uh, just congratulations, obviously, um, you know, to Tennessee for a you know, fabulous season. Um, very difficult to go against. Obviously, we played them earlier in the season. Great coach, um, great defense, very athletic. Dalton Connect is, is very good, and I think he showed that um, today and made it very, very difficult on us, but um, just want to give credit to our players and our and our staff for just sticking with it and uh, competing and playing through and putting ourselves in a good position. Um, obviously, our fans were fabulous in being able to come to Detroit after being in Indianapolis and really support us on Easter and uh, to be able to get to a Final Four is a, is a dream come true for me as a coach and for these guys as the players and uh, I'm just grateful to be in this position. Thanks, Coach. Let's go to questions for the players. We'll start on the right side in the first row here. Hey, Zach. Uh, Kyle with Sports Report Media. You walked off with the net, and you saw Coach Katie. You gave him the net. What did that mean to you and also with him to have him along for the ride? Yeah, you always got to pay respects to the people that came first. Uh, he built this. None of us, that doesn't go any, over any of our heads. Like. Like he, he helped set all this up, so to be able to kind of pay him back, to just give him a little piece of net, it's the least I can do. Okay, moving on to the, uh, sorry, the second row over here in the middle. Josh Orsch, fan-sided. Lance, there's kind of a narrative a little bit in college basketball, at least on the men's side, that there aren't many big stars, but the guy sitting next to you is a pretty big star. Talk about him going back and forth with Dalton and their impact on the game. Um, yeah, I mean, Zach is, I mean, his game speaks for himself. Um, <clears throat> but one thing I really like about Zach, he's humble. Um, you know, he doesn't brag about, you know, what he does and what he's capable of doing. Uh, he just goes out there, he works, he puts his head down. Um, you know, he's a great teammate. To the first row here. Uh, Jimmy Spesky, Purdue Fast Track News. This is for Lance. Um, there have been a couple times, like the Ohio State game this year, where the team really wasn't shooting that well from three and you were kind of uh, hit a big three tonight, hit some threes in that game as well. Is there kind of anything that goes into that with team confidence when the rest of the team really doesn't have threes falling? Um, just staying confident, just being ready to shoot. Coach Paint always tells us to just be ready to, you know, shoot the ball when it comes your way and you're wide open. Um, and I put a lot of work into my shot, uh, so I have a lot of confidence in that. And, you know, my teammates have a lot of confidence in me. Third row on the right, Brennan. Uh, Brandon Quinn with The Athletic, um, congratulations to you all. Uh, if if Braden and Lance could answer this. Um, Braden, from your perspective, when, when Connect started getting going in the first half, just what you were seeing there, and then for Lance, did you anticipate being switched on to him like prior to the, the game? And then, you know, why were you effective on him? I mean, he's an unbelievable player. And he showed it tonight, and when somebody shoots the ball like that, there's just not a whole lot you can do. And we let him loose a couple times, so he was able to make those plays and make shots and kind of punish us from the three-point line. So, I mean, once Lance got on him, um, it's just what he does, man. Like, it's just no, it's an expectation for him to do that, and he did a great job. Second row on the left, on the end. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lance. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really effective offensively in the first half. Um, so I just wanted to make it my main priority uh, to lock in defensively because I think, uh, you know, when I lead defensively, it, you know, kind of trickles down and helps everybody else defensively. Um, and, you know, he was cooking. Um, so, I, you know, I just wanted to do anything I could to, you know, shut his water off. Zach, Zach um, just with the way you guys play, All-American back-to-basket -the centers, they haven't won championships much in the last 10, even 20 years. So, I mean, you're of course not not uh, or, you're, or you're rather you're used to being different uh, as a person, but you know just as a team, what do you think of of the way you guys play being different and being here? 
Uh, I think it's, it's just basketball. Um, I think what wins basketball games in the regular season wins basketball games in the postseason. It's just like the rules stay the same, T our team stays the same, ref, like everything is the same. Um, it's just basketball. And what we do wins games a lot. Um, and you kind of saw it on this stage. Front row on the left. Vedant Gupta, Global Kid Media. Coach Painter, first of all, congratulations on going to the Final Four. Thank you. Off the court, for you, so many coaches taught you things. Coach Katie, you have a maximum of a little over a week with this group. What's one thing that you learned from Coach Katie that you want them to take with them in their lives? To take with them in their lives, um, just understanding that you're a former player for 40 to 50 to 60 years, and just keep that in perspective. It's really hard after you've had success as a player to, to not think that way when your career's over. A lot of time your career's over if you're a professional, you know, around 32, 33, 34 years old. There's a few exceptions to that rule. Um, but just, you know, keep that in place. And uh, I always say you gotta have two dreams. You gotta have one through basketball and you gotta have one through education because you have this opportunity. And, um, you know, he really tried to, to talk to us about not just having a great basketball career, but take an opportunity like that and have a great life. And, and that's something I've always, you know, tried to pass on. Like, have fun with what you're doing. And um, if you can do that and, like, you enjoy what you do, then, you know, you're beating the system. Right side here in the first row. All right, Deion Cash, SC Live 365. Um, fellas, five minutes left in the game. What do you say to, to each other? And, Zach, um, you know, being such a big figure in the game, you know, people say it's a failure if you don't make it to the Final Four. How does it feel? Mm -hmm right now knowing that you've been able to get your squad there. But we'll Fletcher. That first. Oh, Fletcher, you want to take that first one? Yeah, with <clears throat> five minutes left and really the whole time, it's uh, it's corny, but we're, sa we're, tell we're saying stick together. We're saying keep communicating, keep being solid, keep doing what we've done in practice for too many months now. It's uh, what we've worked for. It's what all these guys have done. When shots aren't falling, what are you going to do? You're going to go defend. And uh, credit to these two on my sides. They did a good job on Connect. He's just a great player. And uh, probably a few things we could clean up. But ultimately, in the end, we're just talking to each other, staying solid, knocking out free throws. Zach, want to add to that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've been we've been through it all as a team. Um, it kind of happens when you come back. Um, like we, there's no scenario we can go in that we haven't been in before. Like we're never gonna panic. We're never gonna um, like anything. Like we're we're gonna keep playing. We're gonna keep executing. We're gonna keep doing what we do. And that was kind of the message. Thank you. We'll go to the third row in the middle. Hakeem Gillespie, Indy Star. Lance, just kind of following up on one of the previous questions. So, how difficult is it to chase Connect off all those multiple screens? And obviously, he's very adept at scoring off screens. And just how do you stay confident in the in the game plan when he, especially when he starts hot like that, and just kind of continuing to chase him around the court the way you did? Um, <clears throat> just uh, you know, just sticking with it. Uh, just trying to be physical. Um, make his uh, you know his catches you know limited. Uh, push the ball out where he catches the ball. Um, and, you know, just try to make it hard on him defensively. Um, I mean, he can rise over me and, you know, shoot over, you know, smaller guards. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to do whatever is necessary. Right side, row two. Uh, Terry Davis, right side defender. Hey, Zach, with 38 seconds left, you blocked Dalton's shot. Not only did you block it, you kept it in play. What, walk us through that play. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I missed that free throw before. I was just trying to um, kind of get back and, and try to make my presence felt on that defensive end and kind of make up for it. Um, and he, he drove in, and I felt like that was a play I could make, and I made it. Left side, fourth row, Pat. Pat, 40 Sports Illustrated. For Zach, 39 and a half minutes uh, against an incredibly physical defense. How much did you empty the tank today? It's, it's what we expected. Um, I don't like. I don't want to come off the floor. I don't care how like how how my legs are feeling, how my body feeling. I want to stay on that floor, and I want to keep uh, impacting the game. Um, like it's with, that's what everybody on the team wants. Like nobody wants to come off. I'm never going to complain about like playing a lot of minutes. Left side on the end, fourth row. Bob Kravitz with Indian Indianapolis Monthly for Braden and for Zach. What does it mean? I mean, you gave the the, the net to Coach Katie. What does it mean to get Coach Painter to the Final Four? For me, uh, it's amazing. Like I get to I get to pay him back. Like there was. There were so many coaches that, that looked over me. Um, like you could name a program, I could name a coach that looked over me. Um, the Tennessee, Rick Barnes is a great coach, but 
he, he was in a bunch of our practice, looked over me. Like, it, it's kind of been the story of my life. People have doubted me. People look past me and can't do that anymore. We're going to stay in this row, second from the right. Thank you. Frank Graziano, Media One Sports Canada. Congratulations, man. Zach, this question is for you. It's uh, 2,200 miles, 3,600 3, kilometers from Toronto to Phoenix, but you're there now. When you think about where you were a year ago and where you are today and where you're heading next weekend, how's that journey been for you? Uh, it's, it's, it's been a long journey. Um, obviously, I've been outside of my country for the last for like five, six years, like starting in 11th grade. And to kind of end up the where, where I am now, it, it's amazing, but we still have a lot of basketball left to play. We're going to do on the right side, standing up. Uh, Greg Braggs, Boilers in the stands. Um, Matt, what would you say is the biggest thing you've learned throughout this journey as the head coach of this program through all your ups and downs? Right. Um, just be strong in your convictions um, in terms of how you think the game should be played. Um, you know, we base what we do offensively off, you know, our individual players and just try to play to those strengths and then just be able to play off of those strengths and just being able to stay with it. Like, obviously, we lost last year, and, um, you know, we just had to be better at what we do and do a better job of taking care of the basketball. And I, and I, I stress that all the time. We work on it, but every coach stresses that. You know, every coach talks about rebounding the ball and taking care of the basketball. You know, you want to win that possession battle. And, um, yeah, staying in the process, but also looking at it and, and seeing where, you know, we can make improvements, seeing where we could be better. But we had some guys that didn't shoot the ball as well the year before that I had recruited, I had watched, I'd seen them in different environments really shoot the ball well. And so I believed in their ability and their work ethic. A lot of times, you know, I don't sit there and actually believe in a person as much as I believe in their work. And I delegate a lot of things so I can watch. So when we break down things, we meet as a staff, we talk about it, I delegate it because I don't want to be a part of it to where I'm not seeing the other end of the court. I'm not seeing people because I'm passing or I'm doing stuff, I'm involved with it. I want to watch. But I also watch how they carry themselves. And you know, it's like a lot of people don't like that cocky high school kid and it gets under their skin. That cocky high school kid's a good college player. Deep down, he believes in himself. And you have to have that. And we got a lot of guys sitting up here that has those qualities. And so when you struggle and things happen, we won the Big Ten by three games. We were a number one seed. So to take on that loss and be able to do that, you still got to look back and say, you know, we, we, we did have some success there. And we don't need to change everything. But we do to make some subtle changes. And I thought, you know, Miles Colvin, Cam Heidi, obviously Lance Jones, they really helped us. But I also felt like we had to be more skilled. And by doing that, you know, now not everybody gets to play as much or even play at all. And that's difficult because they have, they've meant a lot to our program. They've done a lot of really good things. And that's the part I hate about coaching because I want it to work. You know, I want everybody on our team to have his role. I want everybody to, to, to be a starter. You know, I want everybody to play and do that. So it's probably not a, a great quality to have as a coach. It's a good one to have as a person um, because it eats at me when, like, we got guys that don't get in the game. It eats at me, they don't play. They probably don't feel that I, I feel that way, um, but I do. And, um, but I, I just believe in the, in the personnel that we had, and I felt we were gonna make some improvements, but I didn't feel like what we were doing was wrong. Fifth row on the right side. Hey, Coach Eddie Pels with AP. It, it's not always that you get you know an ED and a connect out on the floor together, and then they both play the way they played? Uh, were you at, I, I know you're coaching, but were you able to appreciate what was going on out there between them while you were while you were coaching? Yeah, sure. Like, obviously, we played against Dalton Connect earlier in the season. I don't think they realized, you know, quite what they had at that point, um, even though he was a really good player and, and played well in that game. You know, he's a consensus first team All-American. He's probably going to be in the end of the lottery. Uh, but yeah, he's a good player. You can't allow him to get to his sweet spots. And you, you got to have discipline, and, and you got to be able to stay attached to him. And, and at times, you got to kind of force him into some twos and just make it difficult uh, with him. And that's what great players do. Uh, you know, where you kind of cut your losses a little bit, and you're not trying to take away 100 percent. You're kind of taking, trying to take away 80 percent. You know, of what he's trying to get accomplished. But yeah, we've uh, we don't take Zach for granted. You know, and so like some of the like the nights he should have got 50 tonight. Um, if he makes his free throws. And that's what I was, I've, I've told, I, I thought he'd get 50. I know the season's not over, but I thought he'd get 50 in a game this year. Um, and so it's, uh, oh, there we go. 
I wonder what the hell it was. <laughs> um, but no, like, you know, the thing about it is, and I played with Glenn Robinson, so that's my reference point, right, in terms of greatness and a player. He, he's very unselfish. So if you just get to your spots and you know what you're doing and you stay with what we're doing, if they just come and get him, like now we're playing horse. Um, but if they don't, then we want him to be aggressive and score. So, yeah, but it was, it was a good battle between those two guys. A right, reminder, we're having questions for the student athletes first, please. We do have one here in the second row. Ryan Bonaparte, Hammer and Rails for Braden. So this is one of the biggest wins in program history, but you're not done yet, right? So can you kind of contextualize where you are and where you still have to go? Yeah, I mean, um, we just won an elite game. We're about to play in the final four, and we got two to go. So that's kind of <laughs> our schedule coming up, and I think we're all ready for it. Back to row three with Brennan. Uh, also for uh, Fletcher and uh, Braden, we'll all talk about the 40 from Zach, but uh, your guys' ability to get to the basket um, and really attack seemed to have such a major impact of the game. I wonder how much of that was, you know, just trying to go against their pressure. Um, but can you kind of just take, me, take us into that? Fletcher, you want to start that one? Yeah, kind of all the baskets we've got and the, all the looks we got, we knew they were going to come. We knew how they were going to get kicked out to us or on the break going and getting them. But with Zach getting so much attention and so much pressure down low that it opens up lanes for us. And oftentimes the five sometimes neglects us. But everything we've seen, it's credit to our coaches for showing us the film, showing us where we're going to get our baskets and having us prepared and be ready for it. Braden, want to add to that? Yeah, just, I mean, Zach is just such a huge presence. And those, those bigs just like to stay connected with him. So for us to get downhill or, I mean, reject the ball screen and get the point guards looking the opposite way, for us to get downhill and make those next plays, um, I mean, it just, he just opens up the floor so much for us. And they kind of just got to pick their poison there. Like, do they want to stay with us when we drive and shoot a layup, or do they want to stay with Z? So, I mean, it's just pick your poison there. Any other questions for the players specifically? OK, left side, second row. Josh Rush, fan-sided. Fletcher, I talked to you yesterday, bit, yesterday about what was different between the team this year to last year, and you talked a lot about you know developing your bodies, getting tougher, getting stronger. There were a couple moments where you collided with Zakai Ziegler out there and got knocked to the floor, things like that. Talk about you know how that toughness paid off today and, and being able to take that punch and, and give a little bit back. Yeah, that game was hard fought uh, all season, uh, all summer. We we fought hard, and uh, it shows how mentally tough everybody is, how mentally tough the staff is. It's not easy to do what we just did, and to play in a game of that caliber, it's very impressive. And I'm proud of these guys. Um, Tennessee played great, and they played hard, and uh, we played a little bit harder, and that's what we got to keep doing. We'll have the right side here. Uh, if I can sneak in a two for one, uh, Danny Cap, AP Broadcast. Uh, Zach, if you can just pull up big picture and just, I mean, plus 21 on the glass, plus 16 in the paint, uh, best defensive team or one of the best defensive teams you'll face this year. How proud of you are uh, of the job that you were able to do uh, in there to, to battle that defense and, and come out the way you did personally? And last uh, for Fa uh, Fletcher, uh, 44 years, or uh, 44 years, um, you're going to hang a banner that says final four at a minimum, maybe better. Uh, just kind of reflect maybe if you can on, on what it means for you to be a part of this next wave of, of Purdue Boilermakers making the championship stage. Thank you both. Who was uh, the first one directed for? Zach. For Zach, okay. Well, I mean, the rebounds isn't just me, obviously. Uh, obvi I got however many I got, but I'm not out there boxing out five people. Like we got, we got a lot of guys that were doing the right things, a lot of guys that came with the right mindset, and we knew it was going to be a war. Uh, so we weren't surprised by anything they do, any any like hard checks that they throw. We knew what was going to happen. Um, so it's it's not just me; it's the whole team with that that attributes to that rebound difference. Fletcher. Yeah, I think what this means to us and our school and all the people that support us, it, I can't even put it into words right now. In uh, 20 years, I'll probably be able to, but but right now it's it's what we've worked for. It's a lot of hours we've put in, and it, it, looking up in the stands and seeing people cry, it means a lot. Uh, Fans that have no family um, connection to us, they're just fans of our university and our team. And I think the work we put in and how hard we go out there and play, it's, it's special. So I'm so proud of these guys, and I'm looking forward to playing two more games. We'll take one last question for the players here on the first row on the left. Vedant Gupta, Global Kid Media, this is for any of you. I mean, you watch the Final Four each and every year. You watch that net get cut down. It's a full circle moment. 
just how much exactly does that mean to be able to go up there on that ladder and cut down the net? I mean, it's it's amazing. Um, like obviously, we we've watched for the last three years teams kind of have this feeling and this experience, and now <coughs> be able to go through it ourselves. Um, for me to be able to pay like, pay back for Coach Coach Paint uh, for really believing in me is uh, it's, it's amazing. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Congratulations. We'll continue here for a few more minutes with Coach Painter, right side, front row. Uh, Matt, Kyle, Sports Report Media. Um, you did the interview with Robbie after the game. Very emotional with Robbie there. What does this win mean to yeah. past players, former players, yeah. and including yourself being a player to, to get to the Final Four? Yeah, he was, you know, he was watering up when I got up there. That was, that was hard. Um, you know, more than anything, like, you know, you, you appreciate the guys that have played for you, and you, you appreciate that they have opportunities to go other places and they chose your school or they chose you however you want to look at it um, but we weren't very good when that class chose us our facilities were just okay um, that's being nice and we've really done a great job in you know the last 15 years of upgrading what we have um, but when someone you know signs at your school and they have a lot of options like each one more Juwan Johnson and Robbie Hummel and you got last place in the Big Ten, and you're 35, 36 years old, and you really haven't, you haven't, I hadn't done anything. And so for our ability to get those guys, and they believed in us, and we obviously got close, and you know, got the Sweet 16, and but we didn't get further. And you know, in their career, we won the league once and got second three times. You know, he had two major injuries, and so his battle, you know, he should have played in the NBA for eight to ten years, but because of his injuries and everything, he didn't. And he was smart because now, you know, he's, you know, at the top of his game and what he does. I think everybody in this room would agree with that. And, um, but it just means a lot to a lot of people. But for someone like that, you know, they deserved it. You have guilt. There's no doubt about that. You have guilt because Gene Cady deserved to coach in a Final Four and he deserved to play in one. And then you're getting ready to go to one, right? And so, like, I just, I just appreciate what, you know, he did for us and what each one more and Juwan Johnson. We had two guys that were here that were all conference. And when you take a job, if you got some people that are already there to get started, it really helps you. And that was David Teague and Carl Landry. And both of those guys were all conference players. But we had to sign people behind them. And that was the class that really got us going. So just uh, appreciative of everything that Rob's done for our program. Third row here on the right side, Brennan. Yeah. Uh, Brennan Quinn with The Athletic. Um, Matt, can you uh, describe how difficult it is to uh, create teams that are as tactically sound as yours, just limiting turnovers, the offense you run, the high-level stuff you guys do, yeah. but then also a group that is diving on the floor, taking elbows, you know, right. can match toughness with Tennessee. Just that combination. How, how hard is that to craft? Right. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I thought when we struggled about 10 years ago, Everybody talks about doing a better job recruiting, and I thought we had to do a better job evaluating because I would watch Belmont and I would watch Davidson and I'd watch guys at a mid-major level and the best players at those places can play anywhere. And now you're starting to see it with the portal, right? You know, Mark Sears, you know, didn't start at Ohio his freshman year. Now he was behind an NBA player in Jason Preston, but still he didn't start his freshman year there. And now look at him, right? So there's great players everywhere. So I want to I wanna get Mark Sears out of high school, right? Because he had mid-major offers. And, you know, Steve Lutz, who's the head coach at Western Kentucky, um, was the one that recruited Zach Eady. You know, Micah Shrewsbury is the one that recruited Fletcher Lawyer. And so, like, I'm appreciative of those guys and what they did for our program, and they helped us. And I could go on and on about, you know, our current assistants and the things they've done, and Brandon Brantley and Paul Lusk and Terry Johnson and – P.J. Thompson's going to be an absolute star in this profession. Sasha Stefanovic, you know, and then I have two GAs and Jared Wolverine and Tommy Luce that are former players. So we got a good group of guys. We got younger guys that can relate to them. Um, but, you know, we're very systematic 
And, and so you gotta, we're systematic and we, we evolve with our system, if that makes any sense. We evolve towards the strengths of our best players. So I, I always talk about it, I probably talked about it the other day, but I, I think it's uh, a big fallacy in recruiting because everybody wants to play shortstop and lead off. But you, you know, you got one shortstop. And if Cal Ripken's there, he's probably not going to get moved. And so p guys just don't grasp. They want roles. But I want players that just want to win. I want guys that can fit into those roles and understand that. Now, you got to have your horses right. You can't have eight guys that are eight role players. You know, you got to have Carson Edwards. You got to have Caleb Swanigan. You got to have Zach Eady. You got to have Braden Smith being a maestro out there. Now, when you piece those other guys together, you're systematic. You know, a lot of people don't give us credit. We, we really try to push the basketball. Now, some great teams stop us from doing that, and it doesn't look that way at times. But if you let us go or you turn it over or you take bad shots, we really try to push. So it's that balance of it. But, you know, we've been able to get elite big guys. And if you can get a good point guard and get someone who can run the, the team like we have, and you got elite big guys, that you can put skill and competitive spirit together. That Those two qualities together is – is, is magic, man. Guys that'll lay it on the line, guys will dive on the floor. Like, you know, we, we started recruiting Mason Gillis, and, you know, he play, it, it's hard to, sometimes when they play center, Mason Gillis played center in high school, but I go and watch him warm up and just, I'm like, man, he can shoot, but yet his numbers don't show that he's taking a lot of threes. Well, you know, he's just doing what's best for his high school team. And so I'm like, man, he's going to be a good college player. Like when I saw Fletcher Lawyer and how competitive he was, you know, he's got heavy feet, but the ball goes in and he's competitive. Yeah, coming from someone who's got heavier feet. Um, but those guys win the day, man. You know, they, 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 they care. And that's what Lance has been able to do for us. You know, Lance has a good competitive spirit. He has a good way about him. And, uh, and I want to have fun. Like I don't want to get stuck in, a, in an airport you know, with guys I don't want to be around. Like, I get to, I get to choose. It's not a school district. I get to pick. Like, I, I want to have fun. I, and that's selfish, but I, I could care less. And, and so, like, you know, I, I just did a bad job. And I think we all fall into the trap of looking at talent instead of looking at talented people that are productive. The production's what we go on, right? Like, you're like, hey, man, this guy can jump over the moon and do a Whirly Bird 360 but he gets two rebounds. Like, well, who cares then? How many breakaways are you going to get, right? You know, you got to get guys. That's why if you look like, look at UConn and look at those guys on their team, man, they are competitive and they're nasty and they can guard and what they're, they're all about. They're all about winning. And he's done a great job instilling that. But I bet if you went and talked to him, they would talk about, you know, they were that way before. He's just enhanced that stuff and be able to get it, and that's what you get. Like, you can learn from a lot of other people, but you damn sure better learn from your own mistakes. And I think that's what we've been able to do. We'll take one last one on the right side here, and then we'll play. All right, Deion Cash, SE Live 365. Coach, congratulations. Uh, two parts real quick. Zach Eady seems like he's got a little bit of a streak now. Um, he's matured a lot. Talk about that. And five minutes left in the game. What did you tell him, Coach? Yeah. You know, Zach's got um, a competitive, you know, fight to him. And um, he doesn't back down. And you know, when you have that elite physical size and you have that competitive spirit with it, with some skill, you know, it, it's pretty dangerous. He's pretty hard to, pretty hard to handle. You know, we had some guys on fumes. I thought. I thought both both teams had some guys on fumes, and we just had to dig deep, take care of the basketball, and just told him, hey, it's right here for us. You know, this is what we've worked towards. We put it in position. You know, trust the process. You know, take your shots when they're there. You know, just but. You know, big fellow is going to get the right of first refusal. We made sure they understood that. You know, he doesn't have to shoot it, but he's got to touch it. And, you know, put them in that bind. Make them handle all that. You know, he's, he's going to pass if somebody's open, but we have a rule. You want to double him, you want to mess with him, he's going to pass the ball, he's going to dig deeper. But if he stays one-on-one, -on -one, his rule is to score the ball. Left side, first row, Coach. Uh, coach, a big talking point in college basketball has been the 10-0 run or the kill shot. That's something that your team has kind of struggled with the you know past couple of years, but this year it seems like every game there's been one. There was a 13-0 run uh, this year or this game. Can you talk about how that's kind of changed or what's changed about the team that right. has led to that? Yeah, we we played more offensive guys. We we have more skill that is out there, and so I thought a big big part of the game was when they went up 32-21. If I have the numbers right, 
and then we went on a run right then. Like, you know, they were, we were very vulnerable at that point. But we had 25 minutes to play. We had a long game. And for us to be up after being down 11, I thought was a, was a great sign for us. But a lot of people feed off of makes, right? So like you get guys that go five for six from three, they'll defend better and rebound better because they're five for six. But will they defend and rebound when they're over six? Like that's always a telltale, telltale for a championship team. And today, you know, we're three for 15 from three. We shoot 64%, a little under 64% from the free throw line. And I didn't think it affected anything, even though I thought we had some glaring mistakes with Dalton Connect. Like when the ball got loose or rebounds happened, like you got to go to him. Like you can't get separated from him at times. Now he made some tough ones when we did do what we're supposed to, but we gave him a handful of looks and we were fortunate. You know, at the end, he had a, he had a couple of really good looks that didn't go down. We were we were very fortunate, but just now, just staying with it and um, uh, runs are a big part of the game, right? You know, it, obviously when they go against you, um, it can be the difference. But if you can get you know those good runs, or you, if you can get two quality runs and you have a good team and you have good talent, you know you're normally going to win that game. Thanks, coach. We'll have two in the second row here on the left side. Yeah, Israel Schumann from uh, the Purdue Exponent. Matt, you've talked about being grimy when you guys don't shoot well. Just, I mean, was this the essence of, of a performance like that today? Yeah, you know, our ability to rebound, uh, it, it ends up being the difference, right? You know, we had 10 turnovers, they had seven, um, but out rebounded by over, by, by 20, um, in, in my opinion, ends up being the difference. Um, but yeah, you have to grind. I said it after the Gonzaga game. I go, we made shots. Um, and we really separated ourselves on that second half. But if we don't make the shots, you know, how does this game, you know, end up? You know, and that's, you know, obviously you don't want that to happen, right? You know, you want to go 10 for 15 from three and shoot 80% from the line. And, um, but some, that's the game of basketball. The ball doesn't always go in. That's going to be a guarantee. It's why people always say defense and rebounding travel, you know, because you can be constant in those areas. And, um, you know, I, I thought that rebounding piece for us was, was the difference. Fourth row on the left side. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there was a second one. Josh George, fan sided. Matt, Dalton Connect, you talked about him a little bit. He took 31 shots. Was it part of your plan to make them one dimensional? Because that's certainly what happened, taking away kind of the role players. And he went off, but it was still a great defensive performance. Yeah, no, I, not really. You know, we wanted to get up um, and jam the basketball to start. And so that's why we had Lance on him. Then at dead balls, Lance would go on him. Um, there, I, I just didn't think our attention to detail um, was great, but you know, I think it's smart on their part. You know, someone got a hot hand and go to him. You know, why not? You know, if you had to pick someone off their team that you want to get shots for, he'd be the one. And then when you look back on things, you're like, well, this guy took the most shots. This guy took the most shots. They needed a little bit more balance. But at the end of the day, if what you're doing is working, why not stay with it? So I, I thought it made a lot of sense just to stay with him and, and keep going. But I, I do understand your point because we get to that. We get that way with Zach. You know, we want that balance. Um, but we, we also know if he's got the advantage. You know, we had a couple drives in the game where it's just like, you know, you're going nowhere. There's nothing wrong when people fly at you and stop your three to now put the ball in the, you know, the deck and because we were able to drive and get some layups. But then at times when it doesn't work for you, you know, you, you wonder why Zach didn't get the ball. So they have to feel the same way about him. Fourth row on the left. Uh, Bob Kravitz, Indy Monthly. When you got to the top of the ladder, what did you see and what did you feel when you were up there? They didn't leave a lot of net for you. I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, it was just yeah. like a snippet. I don't normally do it. I don't normally cut the net down when we've won championships and stuff. It's just kind of not my deal. But they said I had to do it. So um, nothing. Just, um, you know, you get a lot of shit from people on the other side, um, whether it's rivals or, like, you know, other people in your league or whatever. And that's their job, right? You know, that, that is their job. You know, they're, they're your rivals. You go against them. And that, that's part of it. But, you know, the one thing I appreciated, especially after last year, was the people that supported us from Purdue. And, and, and that was, to me, like, you know, those are the people that are in your corner no matter what. And, uh, you know, I, I just appreciate the Purdue faithful that, that stayed confident that we could get the job done while I was still the head coach. We'll move it over to the right side here in the second row. And we got one in the front and the front after that. Brian Bonaparte, Hammer and Rails. Matt. Seemingly every night, Zach is breaking a record or getting on a short list with legends, but now you start seeing Braden do that. 
So how nice is it to have him for the next uh, game or two, as well as the next two seasons, potentially? Yeah, no, no question about it. Like, you know, he, him evolving as one of the best point guards in the country, if not the best point guard in the country, um, you know, just his ability to pass and see things. You know, he's, he didn't get to it a lot tonight in terms of shooting his pull up. But you guys that follow us have seen him in, in games and especially people that play drop coverage. Like he can really get to that pull up, whether that's a three um, or whether getting to like that 15 footer. So I think that's the most important thing for him is to stay consistent and, and keep looking for a shot. Keep being aggressive because when they take his shot away from him, now he can instinctually make passes, whether that's a post up or a skip or, you know, what have you. But no, he's um, uh, very knowledgeable, very instinctive. Uh, makes good decisions, but you know somebody that you know you want the ball in his hands, you know, and, and that's what we've really found out that keeping the ball in his hands helps everybody, especially Zach, you know. And now they got to deal with him and stop him, and then they got to deal with Zach coming into the post. And if they overdo anything, then we go back and go in, or we reverse it and go in, and then you know just we, we just try to keep playing. But um, he's been fabulous. Last question, right, the right side in the front row. Larry Leach from AP, talked to Gene Cady just a little bit ago, and he said you're like a son. Uh, is he like a dad, and what does it yep. mean to you to have him on this day in person? Yeah, it's great. You know, he obviously deserves to have this moment, right? You know, he, he works so hard, and um, seeing him go into the Hall of Fame, you know, is, is one of the coolest things that, you know, I, I've seen in competitive sports for us here, you know, at, at Purdue. But, like, um, you know, we all, he always comes at the end of the year and then travels with us and he's around and, um, you know, and kind of what he, re, you know, recalls, you know, from his coaching career and all the things and all the experiences that you had. And um, they won three Big Ten championships after I graduated. And so, like, it, it's always, um, you know, something that, you know, you wanted to be a part of that. And um, he's always included me and I've always included him. Um, but if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. So. When you're 18 years old and you get recruited by somebody, you don't think 15 years later you're going to be the head coach and take his place, right? So to me, it was really surreal when I coached one year in college and they were interested in me. But I know he had a big part of it. I know he had a huge part of it. And I'm you know, very grateful for that and very grateful for all he's done for me and our players. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time. All right. Thank, thank you, everyone. You.